G chord. A Lydia. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry if that occurs. It might do, it might not. So, this is the ML3 Pro Traditional, um, and it's a beautiful instrument. I am so glad that... Uh, hands up if you voted for this. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. You created exactly what I wanted. <laughs> it's perfect. In every single way. I, I um, <laughs> And owning a guitar company that makes collaboratively designed stuff is terrifying. You could have made anything at all. It could have been a flying sausage. It could have been a, a pickle with legs. Oh, yeah. A pickle rib. It could have been. Anything. And um, and it's exactly what I was after. So thank you for designing my, my perfect guitar that I now get to go and play. I've been playing this a lot. Let's start with the back. So as you can see, it has a tree wood neck, and uh, it's it's baked maple. So. Hey Jabbers, why did you make it from uh, baked maple? I was just wondering why that was the case. Thank you for asking. Uh, because originally, Lee and I were just like, that looks really cool. Why don't we make a baked maple neck? Everyone else is doing it. That's a cool thing. Yeah? And uh, we can do it for way, way cheaper. So we, we made it from baked maple because it looked great. And then I did this tour. And I went from England, where I live, all the way to Korea inspected some really cool new prototypes that I may or may not discuss with you later on. Uh, I spent a few days there, it's very cold, very wet, and then it's very hot, and then it's very wet, and then it's very dry. And then to Australia, <sighs> this is a long way, man. I went to uh, Sydney, and then I went to Canberra, and then I went to Melbourne, and then I went back to somewhere else, and then I flew to California, and then I took an internal flight to, and we've been everywhere, we've done like three internal flights in America. This has been a traveled, and I haven't needed to touch this neck once through every single environment that it's been through. I've recorded with it, I've, I've played live stuff with it. The last gig this guitar did was with Billy Gibbons back in London at a really big venue. Good point. And um, so it's, it's very stable. It's the lack of moisture in the neck that, that aids the stability. Uh, and then it looks like it's a neck through, but it's not. It's a set neck that's been carved in a beautiful way. So it's easy to wrap your fingers around and do some wiggly diddly at the dusty end. I'm here all day. By the way, the level of quality of coffee is considerably higher in San Francisco oh, yeah. than yeah. other parts of California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Be proud of yeah, give yourselves a coffee round <laughs> of applause. Because I have to tell you, we go places where it's practically a soft drink. Oh. You're like you just like pints and pints of it, you're like it's not doing anything. This isn't a thing. This is a random a random existence. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> to be, but really chilled if you wanted to do that chilled out thing as well. Someone just bought a cool thing. <laughs> that lives inside every one of these guitars. It comes with its own fairy. You only see it if you believe in it, though, okay? So, in the middle, it's warm and woody and does that nice, warm, woody thing. <laughs> Thank you. 
net, net, which does all the things you expect in net to do. <laughs> Hands up if you were brought here by a partner and are now thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> I'm sorry. But also, thank you, and you won't get your time back. <laughs> it's just, it's now part of you. Uh, England is in your brain. My partner wouldn't kill. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You really love your partner, which is a good thing to me. It's good, it's good. <laughs> surprised me <laughs> living in I live in two worlds in my brain one of them is progressive hard rock and then one of them is this this world I've lived in for years but you've never really seen a lot of which is clockwork wolf and company which is Americana blues rock imagine watching breaking bad and then that soundscape is the sound that I write for that kind of vibe um, and so this does both of those, surprisingly well, and it shouldn't do, I don't really know why it does. And we're also bringing out another one for Black Friday, which is Black, we call it the Obsidian, and that's coming with a couple of beautiful Annika 5 humbuckers. But these P90s kick it uh, hardcore, so I'm going to check. Because you can either play chord progressions that sit within a key, or within a chosen mode, or whatever your flavour of theory and depth of theory takes you to, or you can, you can take it in a completely different direction musically. Let me just drop tune a second. <laughs> I normally use, uh, thank you for asking, uh, 10 to 52 paradigm only four strings. But these are 10 to 46, so uh, it's a little bit flop A on the low end. Are you in uh, 440 or? Uh, I'm in 440, yeah. So I'm going to play you a couple of riffs. One of them is a new Dorje riff. You interested in that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And the other one is a, a thing that I wrote for a while back. So, <laughs> thank you. So let's start with uh, a new riff from Dorje to cope with the writing thing. And then I'm going to talk about an old riff from Dorje to talk about the chord progression thing. So we're going to cover lots of birds. You're all birds. I've got some stones. It's an analogy we use in England. I don't know if it works in this country. Bring it, Robbie! Okay. <laughs> it's, it's arrived. Uh, so here's a new... A new, a new <laughs> so there's a new riff. I was at a Norwegian guitar festival called Larvik Guitar Festival. Probably pronounced that wrong. That's how it sounds to me when I hear it. And I, I'm in a massively privileged position to play on stage with people like Steve Vai and Paul Gilbert and Marty Friedman and all these insane people that blow my mind. Imagine being me and I'm backstage warming up. It's the first one of these proper festivals. And in walks Paul Gilbert. And he goes, hey, Rob, how you doing? I want to show you videos. And I'm like, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he sat down and he goes, Hey, I'm watching your uh, hybrid picking. I was thinking you should try this thing I've been working on recently. 
it's my practice in my California. <laughs> and um, I was like, anything you want to do is fine, sir. <laughs> so he taught me an exercise for hybrid picking and for string skipping. Oh. And uh, it led me to that thing. And part of it uh, was this. <laughs> but in standard tuning, and I was in drop tuning by accident, and I went, that sounds great. So I remembered it, took it back, and worked on it, and it sounded like something expanding, something opening, an opening expansive sound using the second intervallic, like ninths and stuff. And I thought what it needs, like a, an answer to the question, would be something that closed, something that folded, um, that returned it back to where it came from. So I kind of inverted it, and got this. Which is like an opposite. It gives it an answer. So you get it's like a full circle, you know? And I closed my eyes and I, I visualized or felt what I was seeing when I'm playing. I do this all the time. It's very important to get a visual. And it's like I'm watching this giant old oil painting. The bottom left hand corner is being revealed and I can see like a battlefield and a giant ice wall and an army of the dead running towards yeah. this Game of Thrones ice wall. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, this is great. Seeing Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones. And then a giant going, poof, poof, being pelted with arrows. And uh, he's about to reach the door and I'm like, damn, I want to hear the giant now. I need to hear the footsteps. So I got this one. <laughs> It sounds way better on the thinner string because you get that boom, boom, that kind of tune, boom, like a war horn. So, and then in this visualization of the song, I saw an allied army running towards to help and a fanfare, and I wanted a fanfare, so I created a fanfare. So that's my fan. So now, close your eyes and visualize as I play this to hypnotize. And I thought, you know what sounds great is if you take a riff that works and just play it lower. <laughs> so I did the same thing. And when I explained it to, to Beer and Dave and Ben and the band, they were like, what, what is it? And I went, oh, it's like an army of the undead running towards the wall, giant for its touch. And they were like, okay, yeah, cool, that's good. Cool. Yeah, we get that. So I've, I'm very visual with my writing. Sometimes I can flip it, I can look at something, a person, a painting, a show, and I hear sounds, music, melody sometimes, sometimes lyric. Uh, and if you're really aware... Thank you very much, Miss Hannah. Everybody, this is Hannah Bolton. Woo! Oh yeah, we've also we've got a, a, a gift for you. So you know I use Gravity Picks. Yeah. Gravity pick. So um, Gravity came to see me and they've just given you all picks. Woo! You get a pick. You get a pick. Yeah! Woo! There's Oprah in here, man. <laughs> um, so it's exciting. If we run out of picks in the box, I've got a load backstage. You can have some of my, my own personal yes! stash. Picks. Piak! Piak! me piaks. Plectrum. So, um, yeah, visualization is really important when it comes to writing because if you're not focusing on what you're seeing, there is no story. I'll wait until they're passed out before you can People are too excited. Yeah. They are very thick, they do not move, they are consistent, so you need to hold them softly to get to get them to flow over the string, but if you want to hold them hard, then you've got that option as well. So you can do things like, give me another coffee, I'm going to work. More reverb. Yeah, more reverb. <laughs> more game, more reverb. Drown it. So, uh, <laughs> so wish me all of the American San Francisco luck. We got you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man.